Hey, well, all right, sir, here we go there. What are they going to give for them? I'm a $600 down here. Now. You don't want to miss this big real estate auction Friday, August 15th, 2014, starting at 10 a.m. The auctions will be held at each location. Like us on Facebook if you would like to follow the bidding online. For more information, contact us at Belize Real Estate Auctions at gmail.com or call at 623-1612. Don't miss your chance to cash in Friday, August 15th, 2014 at 10 a.m. Son, we just can't stand to have a mediocre man selling things at auction using our good name. I'll send you off to auction school, then you'll be nobody's fool. You can take your place among the best. Thirty-five dollar bid, and I'll afford it. I'll afford it. Will they give me forty? Make it forty bid. I'm all afford it. All the zone we live in forty. Who bid a forty dollar bid? Forty dollar bid, and I'll forty five. Will they give me forty five? I'll make it a forty five bid. A forty five. Who would bid it at a forty five dollar bid? So from that boy who went to school, there grew a man who played it cool. He came back home a full-fledged auctioneer. This property with great upside potential is located on three parcels in Queen Square. Block 45, parcel numbers 255, 256, and 257. The land contains 1,327.77 square yards, and the building contains 9,702 square feet under roof. The subject enjoys all of the municipal services which include electricity, piped water supply, telephone, cable services, hospital services, police and fire protection, postal delivery, garbage collection disposal, and street lighting within Belize City. Transportation is via the public commuter system comprising of taxis and city shuttles. The site is centrally located and is adjacent to the Michael Finnegan Market, Novello's Bus Terminal, and the famous Pound Yard. It is also near to Rogers Stadium, St. Michael College, and other schools. Raccoon Police Station is also nearby. The location is also in close proximity to Fuel Station, Commercial Bank, Pharmacies, and Medical Clinic. There are small grocery stores in the neighborhood. The property is improved with a furrow concrete, timber, and zinc structure used in the marketplace. It consists of three main sections, an area with seven stalls, a supermarket area, and an open area presently used as living quarters. The total floor area of the building is 9,702 square feet. The supermarket area is concrete cast top with glass show display windows and a glass door, protected with metal shutters. The floor area encloses 943 square feet and the floor is covered with ceramic tiles. In addition, the supermarket extends into the main structure and the floor has ceramic tiles. Attached to the second with cast flat top is a shed type zinc roof with concrete walls with a floor area of 575 square feet. The major section of the structure is hip zinc roof in the middle with shed type zinc roof on both sides. It consists of a floor area of 8,184 square feet. Windows are glass type show windows with metal shutters and a main timber panel door. The upper part of the walls is in closed with plysum and stucco. The location is centrally located with most amenities in close proximity. The demand for commercial properties is good, thus the subject is highly marketable. Check back for upcoming auction dates. Further information contact us at Belize Real Estate Auctions at gmail.com or find us on Facebook. Then the people came from miles around just to hear him make that rhythmic sound that filled their hearts with such a happy cheer. His fans spread out from shore to shore, he had all he could do and more, had to buy a plane to get around. Now he's a pops in all the land, let Paul give that man a hand, he's the best of all the auctioneers. Forty-five dollar bid, and I'll a bitter dollar fifty, will they give me fifty, 
make a fifty bit or all a fifty dollar bill to give a fifty hooter, bit a fifty dollar bill. Fifty dollar bit and now fifty five will give me fifty five to make it a fifty five bit a fifty five sold that home for a fifty dollar bill. Hey, well, all right, sir, open the gate and let them out and walk them, boys. Here we come a lock number 29 in. What are they going to give for them? I'm a 25, I'll get 35, another 50, make a 50, bit of wrong, a 50, now 60, will they give me 60, now 75, and 85, and 95, and 100, and 25, and 50, 75, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, and 6, now 7, now 800, and all of them to buy them back. Hey, well, all right, sir, here we go there, and what are they going to give for them? I'm at $600 down here now, 10 and now, 25 and now, 35 and now, 50 now, 60, will they give me 60 now, 75, 75, another 85 dollars on the buy there. There was a boy in Arkansas who wouldn't listen to his ma when she told him he should go to school. He'd sneak away in the afternoon, take a little walk, then pretty soon you'd find him at the local auction barn. He'd stand and listen carefully, then pretty soon he began to see how the auctioneer could talk so rapidly. He said, oh my, it's do or die, I've got to learn that auction cry, gotta make my mark and be an auctioneer. Twenty-five dollar bill and now thirty dollar thirty will it give me thirty make it thirty bit upon a thirty dollar will it give me thirty who a bit of thirty dollar bill Thirty dollar bit and now thirty-five will it give me thirty-five to make it thirty-five to bit of thirty-five who would have bit it at a thirty-five dollar bid As time went on he did his best and all could see he didn't just he practiced calling bids both night and day his pap would find him behind the barn just working up an awful storm as he tried to imitate the auctioneer. Then his pap said, son, we just can't stand to have a mediocre man selling things at auction using our good name. I'll send you off to auction school, then you'll be nobody's fool. You can take your place among the best. Thirty-five dollar bid and dollar forty dollar forty will they give me forty make it forty bid and dollar forty dollars on we live forty who bid a forty dollar bid. Forty dollar bid and now forty five will give me forty five to make it a forty five bid and a forty five who would have bid it at a forty five dollar bid. So from that boy who went to school there grew a man who played it cool. He came back home a full fledged auctioneer. Then the people came from miles around just to hear him make that rhythmic sound that filled their hearts with such a happy cheer. His fame spread out from shore to shore. He had all he could do and more. Had to buy a plane to get around. Now he's a pops in all the land. Let Paul give that man a hand. He's the best of all the auctioneers. Forty-five dollar bid and all the fifty dollar fifty will they give me fifty? Make it fifty bid or all the fifty dollar will they give me fifty? Who the fifty fifty dollar bid? Fifty dollar bid and all the fifty-five will they give me fifty-five to make it a fifty-five to bid a fifty-five to sold that home for a fifty dollar bill. Hey, well, all right, sir, open the gate and let them out and walk them, boys. Here we come a lock number 29 in. What are they going to give for them? I'm a 25, I'll get 35, and now the 50, make a 50, bit of wrong, 50, now 60, will they give me 60, now 75, and I 85, and I 95, and I 100, and I 25, and I 50, 75, and I 2, and I 3, and I 4, and I 5, and I 6, and I 7, and I 800, and all of them to buy Hey, well, all right, sir, here we go there, and what are they going to give for them? I'm at $600 down here now, 10, and now 25, and now 35, and now the 50, now 60, will they give me 60, now 75, 75, and I 85, and all of them to buy there. There was a boy in Arkansas who wouldn't listen to his ma when she told him he should go to school. He'd sneak away in the afternoon, take a little walk, then pretty soon you'd find him at the local auction barn. He'd stand and listen carefully, then pretty soon he began to see how the auctioneer could talk so rapidly. He said, oh my, it's do or die, I've got to learn that auction cry, gotta make my mark and be an auctioneer. Twenty-five dollar bid and now thirty dollar thirty will it give me thirty make it thirty bid upon a thirty dollar will it give me thirty who the bid a thirty dollar bid thirty dollar bid and now thirty-five will it give me thirty-five to make it thirty-five to bid a thirty-five who would have bid it at a thirty-five dollar bid? As time went on, he did his best and all could see he didn't just he practiced calling bids both night and day. His pap would find him behind the barn just working up an awful storm as he tried to imitate the auctioneer.
morning and welcome to Morning Matters. This morning again, we are broadcasting from Placencia. We're at Mirror Sols in Placencia. It's right off the sidewalk. With me this morning, I have David Vernon. David, good morning. How are you? Very good. David, are you a native mm. of Placencia? I think as native as it'll get. You were born here? You grew up here? Born here. Not grew up here all my life, but definitely born here. As a child, how much time did you spend here? Actually, very little. I spent probably the first three years of my life here. And then where did you go? Uh, then I went to Boom. You went to Boom? You grew up in Boom? I went to Boom until I was nine years old, went to the States, came back when I was 26 years old, and been back here since in Placencia. Good. That's probably like two years. I'm just pulling your leg. <laughs> <laughs> David, tell us a little bit about the history of Placencia because we hear a lot of bits and pieces. We hear about, I mean, some of us in Belize never experience prejudice. We never experience what it is to say you're an outcast, you can't be in, um, for whatever reason it has been. We've never just, we've just never experienced it. Mm -hmm. But we know that people in Placencia, people in St. Bite, um, Garifuna people that went to Belize City at some point in time experienced that firsthand. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, like I mentioned to you before, is some of the same issues were happening in Placencia because the original people of Placencia were light-skinned people. And when you look at all the old photographs, many of them would have hats, long sleeve shirts, so that they wouldn't get sunburned. And for the people from the same bite, for them to come from the same bite, uh, they had to leave at a certain time. They were actually prejudiced against because of their skin color to the extent of what if they came and asked for water, they basically had a milk pan that was cut open. And that milk pan, if you cut open the top of a milk pan and leave just enough for that uh, lid to, a portion of that lid to stay on it, and then you bend it to give it a handle, that was what the people of St. Bite actually was given water in. And they had to come up the back step to get that uh, can of water. How long did this go on for? Man, or was I, more or less, when did it stop? I couldn't tell you when it stopped because that, at that time when it would have stopped, I would have already moved out of the... I was in the States. I wasn't here. You were gone. Time. Yeah, I was gone. Did, so I really can't tell you Did when anybody in your family <coughs> experience any form of prejudice? Uh, my mom, because my mom was one of the first black people to move into the village. And like I mentioned to you guys, driving from the States with her this is a long trip this is a one week trip and she's sitting in the seat next to me and she's giving me all her story of moving to Placencia as one of the only black women living in this community and like I mentioned it just brought tears to my eyes I'm driving and trying to hold back the tears because of the amount of uh, like really touching stories that really affected her why did she choose to come knowing the pressure that she would have been well, on that? I don't think she knew the pressure though. Uh, she met a fisherman in Belize City that charmed her. <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she met a fisherman in, the, in Belize City that charmed her and, and you know how that goes, you know, because uh, my wife is from the U.S. and it was the same situation where she was charmed to come to Belize. So it was the same thing with um, my mom being charmed to come to Placencia. And so when she was charmed to come here, she didn't realize what she was getting herself into. She thought that everybody was as nice as this man that she fell in love with. Mm -hmm. Ha ha. Until she reached here and then she realized that, you know, things were totally different on the way she was accepted. Her acceptance was minimal to say the least. She Could you imagine? A, I mean, now we all see ourselves as black. We're all black people. But the saddest thing is being black and not knowing it. And that is exactly what was happening to those people back mm -hmm. in the day. They were all black and they didn't know it. They had some degree of, yeah, <laughs> because they were considered Creoles. So they had some degree, you know, but because they came out on the light side, because remember in Belize City, some of the same issues were happening. Oh, yes. With the Creoles, if you were on the light side, then you were with one group. If you were, you know, dark as kin, you were looked down upon. I am glad that and those days are over. Is it? You know what? <laughs> Good point. I am, well, I would hope that nobody in this day and age would allow themselves to be treated that way because so much has happened for that to have changed. Mm -hmm. And if you are a Gary Finneman with 
black skin and you allow somebody to treat you as less of a person then you would have taken your entire race backwards you have to stand mm -hmm. up and say no you can't treat me like this i will not drink out of that milk can if anybody try and give you a milk can no it doesn't matter how poor you are you must say no if the only way you can get into somebody's house now is through the back door then you don't deserve to be in their house mm -hmm. or they don't deserve your presence in their house you have to say how no. times have changed eh? how times have changed <laughs> and you know it's funny yeah. because i grew up in a home where my father is the reason that i am the color that i am my mother mm. is very fair she could have come from placentia mm. if you didn't know any better <laughs> and sometimes i didn't think that he realized he was the black one <laughs> <laughs> you know i had to constantly remind him as a young girl that hey hey you are the black mm. one you know because and I think it has a lot to do with mindset and it's so unfortunate that people don't, they see color, not people. You know, because color doesn't make you who you are. You are who you are. It's the individual person that you are. So why were they allowed to stay in St. Bite? Because St. Bite is the neighboring village. They could walk to St. Bite. Mm -hmm. Why so were they five, allowed to stay there away. and not here? Well, according to uh, stories that I've heard growing up, it was that St. Bite was the closest furthest distance away from <laughs> and uh hence the name sane from the uh, uh from the sane nets that they used to that they used to um, use for fishing and the stench from the sane nets they used to keep them there and so these were the people that um the cared for them kind of thing like cared washed for over those the nets. nets yeah and so that was the closest distance that they could um keep the sane nets and so that's where the the people were allowed to stay and for my grandfather, I was told that he was the one that brought most of the people from St. Bite from, because remember, there was a lot of trade between Puerto Barrios and Belize. And so a lot of the men from Belize were actually trading between these because, and in some cases, uh, bootlegging uh, stuff from the neighboring countries into Belize. Ah. And the story goes that he basically never took one shore. He would uh, bring the boat in front of St. Bite, and they had to jump overboard and swim to shore. Wow. Literally, with their stuff. That was it? Yeah. So it was a harsh treatment for many people that, you know, people of color. Wow. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. Do you think that some of that still live in Placencia today? Some of that idea? Uh, yes, I hear it. Uh, uh, you know, the today we use the term... Uh, Garifuna and Garinago. You ever hear the term carob? That's a derogatory term, kind of like coolie, that you must not use for somebody. Exactly. You know? And so you find that some of the, the older heads, and even, you know, I must say my brother as well, <laughs> include. <laughs> I don't think he likes you this. No, but he knows, you know, he doesn't care. So uh, <laughs> there you go. That's what I mentioned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's a, you know, he's one of those uh, from that generation. That still discriminate. That still. Let me ask: you know, Is he? Does he have the same? I was gonna ask: Does yeah. he have the complexion like no, you? No, no, no. Yes, he has my complexion. Does he know who his mother is? Yes, he does. Isn't that a shame, though? Yeah, and it was just brought up. Uh, I just got a call when uh, this past week because he's a member of Rotary, <laughs> and <laughs> the Rotary group, <laughs> and the Rotary group was going to do something in Saint know, Bite. In Saint Bite, and he made a derogatory and he term. Go? You know. No, he just made a you know comment using that derogatory term. That's so unfortunate. I wish that all of so us could still, see people for people. It's still within that mindset. Now tell me something good about Placencia, man, because I know there's a lot of good things going on in Placencia. Placencia has grown tremendously over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going on in Placencia? I would say um, a lot's going on in Placencia. All you have to look around and see the development that's happening in Placencia. Uh, some negatives with the cruise line. We'll leave that out of this conversation yes. because that is Let another issue all by that. itself. You know, I, yeah. I don't think that's going to really affect Placenta per se. But um, when you look in uh, Placencia, we have one of the better tour guide associations. Okay. We have some of the premier destinations. Placencia is one of those destinations where you're going to have the most beautiful beaches in the country. But within a short uh, drive from here, you could do a lot of inland stuff as well. We have a lagoon that we could paddle in. Uh, we do manatee watches, manatee watching. So just within Placenza vicinity, there's a lot of things to do. And not only for um, visitors that are actually coming to Placenza, but also Belizeans that wants to be 
uh, visitors to Placenta for the first time. And we are seeing that a lot now, that almost on any given weekend, we're seeing two, three busfuls of people coming from one the other day. I asked them, where are you guys from? They said, Santa Ana. Where is Santa <laughs> How many people know where Santa Ana? Santa Ana. Yeah, Santa Ana is, you know, or Santa Ana or Santa Ana. Is it Santa Ana? It's like through Mascal Road? Is that where they came Road, from? Through the Mascal Road, yeah. And who, you know, who the fuck? Yes, Santa Ana? Uh -huh. No, I didn't. Until they mentioned that. I saw you could see more and more people actually coming to know Placencia. Belizeans are coming to know Placencia and actually coming back and doing vacations in Placencia. All right, you know, um, Morning Matters gets into Morning Matters mode where we ask a lot of questions. People send in their questions and mm -hmm. they would like for somebody to answer it. Um, but I will bring up an old matter. Mm -hmm. Not that I still have it in my phone, but it is in my mind. Mm -hmm. And because of where I am, I think that it is fitting. Mm -hmm. um, this woman sent a text one day to say that the reason her man left her is because the woman obeyed her man away. <laughs> and I know that down here... I mean, the southern part of the country, in my mind at least, is where that kind of belief is, is more dominant. Yes. Do you think that Obia, first let me ask you, what is your impressions on Obia? Like I mentioned, I believe Obia is just another religion. It's, but I but think it's a religion to the devil, actually. Religion for the devil, but it's still a, it's still a religious yes. belief. Like yes. I mentioned also, that it is, yes. <laughs> I remember Christianity have also killed a lot of people and, and do bad things as well. True. And all religions have done bad things uh, to, their, to their own people, as a matter of fact. Uh, but with that being said, I remember living in Dangria, actually for two years. And I used to share a room... This is back in the day of the Old Song City Band. I don't know if you remember the, uh, the Old Song City Band used to do uh, like Bikini Panty and yes, all these old songs. songs and all, yes. yeah. So one of the, I uh, used to hang out with the band members at the time and, you know, two of us decided to share rent, get hire someone. Room. Yeah, get a room, share rent, have somebody cook for us. And so uh, casually this Garifuna woman would, you know, we went there three times a day to eat, paid her weekly. And on one of those occasions one night, we went there and the, the conversation was sweat rice. And I don't know if you're familiar with, you know, sweat rice. It's not the kind of rice anybody wants to eat. Can and so right anyway, now? when she mentioned about sweat rice, and I didn't know, wasn't familiar with sweat rice. And she said, well, I, I'll just use sweat rice on you guys, you know, so that I could have control over you. Why did she say that? Because the next day... We find a new cook. <laughs> we moved out. The <laughs> exactly. We moved out and find a new cook the next day because of you know because of this sweat rice issue. Do you think that somebody can obey your husband or your wife away from you? Do you yeah, think it's I, possible? I think in belief that if you believe it, yes, it could happen. If you don't believe in it, it doesn't happen. I believe just that. I mm. believe that nothing works without your contribution. Yes, you, you have, have to, to be present. Mm -hmm. So if you believe that, why you run away from the lady's sweat rice? Because it was nasty. More than anything else. Anything else, else I'm <laughs> thinking, yeah. It's nasty. Nastiness, yeah. It's nasty. It, not that it has power, but mm -hmm. that, that can make you sick, physically yes. sick. Uh -huh. All right, yeah. for the ones that don't know what sweat rice is, you have to look it up on your own because I'm not in a position to explain yeah. that to you. And this is not a good medium. <laughs> this is not a good medium for you. Ask somebody, yeah. Ask somebody yeah, in your ask community. Somebody. Um, ask a Caribbean person, they'll tell you what mm. it is. Um, but it's definitely nasty. Another guy came in, to, another guy called me one day and he said he came in and saw that them doing that to him. Oh, yeah. He still stayed with the woman. I said, boy, <laughs> something wrong with you. She will kill you. That is a nasty thing. Let's get into another matter. Mm. It says, morning, I'm dating this boy, but he likes... What? He like. Oh, I'm dating this guy, but he lives in Hopkins, and I live in PG. Mm -hmm. This weekend, we made a hang, and he have one sister, but they roll like they go out. Oh, but they like to go out. What should I do? One live in Hopkins, one live in PG, and I guess they were supposed to hang, and they can't hang because he has to go hang out with his sister. She wants to know what to do. Change him. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. If, 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 he's, if, somebody, if he's choosing someone else over her, I would say change him. Find somebody that's interested in her. Yes, you can change him, or you can say to him, 
we had plans before you can invite your sister to come along with us she can be a third wheel in this in this party but i don't see why i must be eliminated because now you have a new plan if you have a new but plan, is this a, is this an ongoing thing first True. of all that's is it something point. that's uh, that's done regularly if it's a one time and he might if, have a if it's a one time thing then no problem but if it's something that every time it comes for them to hang out the excuse is you know oh, i have someone else i you know need to hang out with then I would say just change him because he's not interested in you. He's finding excuses. Definitely. Good morning. I have this friend that is pregnant. She has her boyfriend, supposedly the baby's dad. But I know that he is not. And I feel bad seeing this poor young man working so hard. What am I to do? <laughs> Stay out of the people and business. How you know who she pregnant for? She would know. You facey? That's the how we say it in a Creole? She facey, you not think? Yeah, unless she's really concerned about the individual, that female. Or but how can she be sure who her friend is pregnant for? Mm -hmm. Maybe and, not and even what her, is her friend. Interest? What is her interest in, in this. trying to figure out who she's pregnant for? You know, I have a friend who say, if the baby born in your bed, they'll claim it that for you. So maybe this man... He, if he's the boyfriend, he has the possibility of being the father of this child. Mm -hmm. Maybe she knows that her friend is seeing another man along with her boyfriend. And the possibility exists that he too can be the father of this child. But if the boyfriend is taking responsibility... Both can't be though. No, both can't be. But if the boyfriend is taking responsibility and the boyfriend is there, why should you as a third party get involved? It's none of your business. Unless... How how well are, are they friends there? How good of friends are these? Obviously, are these? she's not good enough a friend to her if mm. that is her interest at this time. Okay. Don't you think? If your wife, let's say you and your wife were together and your wife is pregnant, but I am your wife's friend. Mm -hmm. And I feel that maybe the baby isn't yours. It's for Tom Jones. Mm -hmm. But I know you're putting in all the work. What? And But Mary, who is your wife, is my friend. Why would I be concerned so much about you? Why, would, why wouldn't my concern be about the best interest of this unborn child and my friend? Because I wouldn't want my friend to get hurt. But your friend is the one giving the trouble. You, my friend is the woman that is pregnant, pregnant. with this baby and she's yes. getting the best care from you. So why would I then come to you and say, you know, I don't think that baby is yours, you know? Because... What about when the person find out that the baby is not his? Why then? But what if, what if the baby is his? What if it's not? What well, if it is not? <laughs> it is my duty. I think if you want to Because if it's, you know, see, if the issue is right now, that the way I see it, if, mm -hmm. if you're uh, with this person from, a ma from the male's pr perspective mm -hmm. of being with that person and taking care of this person all the while, yeah. assuming that this child is mine. Yes. And then suddenly... It's not. It's not. I think it's ignorant. Yes. That's how we say it in a Creole. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so now if I have a friend that's coming and this friend is telling me, uh, this friend is looking out for my best interest, that maybe you need to find out exactly who the father of this child is so that you don't have somebody blow up in your face, that could be considered a true friend because that friend is looking out for your best interest before that baby is born or before that person find out that that child is not his but why wouldn't, well, why wouldn't that friend then go to the girl and say, look, Mary Jane, mm -hmm. you know that the possibility exists that John might not be this baby's father. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't she then best advise the friend as opposed to going to the man? Because going to the man is only making things worse. worse. Yes. Uh -huh. Go to your friend and say, Mary Jane, do you know who the father of this child is? If the friend says Tom Jones is the father mm -hmm. of this child and John is taking care of me, you need to advise Mary Jane to tell John, mm. John, you're my boyfriend, I love you, I made a mistake at some point in time or whatever it is, however you want to word it, mm. but the child I am carrying is not yours. That is if you are 100% sure. sure. Yes. If you are not sure, I would recommend if you are not sure who the child's father is, stop the other relationship right away. Yes. It's the one mm. that, that made you pregnant or you think could have made you pregnant, stop that mm. relationship. Build a bond with you and John that is strong. Yes. That when the child comes to life, if the child, you take him or her for a paternity test, and if the test proves that he is not the father, then you sit down and speak to him. Outside of that, mm -hmm. relax yourself. Give you an example of what happened uh, to me in the States, living in the States. Mm -hmm. Met this young lady, you know, 
beautiful young lady I went out with. Even went to the point, introduced her to my mom and stuff. And, you know, like men don't really think about pregnancy and stuff and how long women been pregnant. And even up to today, I just realizing that, uh, you know, uh, that women really don't start showing this big belly until way into like what three four five six months five, depending six, yeah. yeah up until when they're five six months is when, when they're really really, really big, big yeah. when they're actually showing but you have some women that are naturally have a little, a little you know Body pouch like yeah you. a little pouch like you there yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> can't tell if yeah. i'm pregnant or not <laughs> and yeah and so you know i dated this woman for a few you know for a few months you come with your own pouch came with her own pouch <laughs> and all <laughs> And then, you know, suddenly she, you know, she tells me she's about to have a baby. The baby comes, you know, and I'm excited about this, this baby. This is your and baby in your th mind. This is my baby. I'm excited about this baby. I go and I, you know, go and I buy um, Pampers by the case, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited shopping and all that for the baby. And my mother called me aside one, you know, one day and said, you know, how long, how long have you and, you know, and this young lady been together? And I said, I'm not really quite sure, you know. She said, I... I it just seems to me that you guys haven't been long enough for her to be having a baby now, you know. And I took that to heart. I went and I started looking back to trying to figure out, you know. When you started being when with her. When we started, you know, being together. And we were together like six months. Baby takes nine months. Cut that off immediately. So I could actually see something like that happening where she got pregnant for someone else. That person left her. She saw me uh, coming in on the scene. I found her attractive, and she said, "Well, this is the right person." <laughs> but just take uh, as a foster, you know. Did you see the father. baby? Yeah, I saw the baby for the first couple of times, but I knew it wasn't mine because, simply because of the time that the six months that we were together. Did you had al did you already claim this baby, like register the baby and all of that? Did you? No, no, no. The baby was uh, was born. After was you excited. left. Huh? Uh, the baby was born after no, you the left? No, the baby was born when I, uh, was, still I was still present. around. Yeah, I was still okay. around when the baby was born. But you never took responsibility? Like you never registered this baby as your no. baby? No, I didn't. For another man? Because my mom had, you know, told me about that before the baby was registered. Uh, did you have a talk with the woman? Did she yes, ever uh -huh. explain? What did she say to you? A sorry boy, David, you know, I was hoping for something different. No, she just said, um, you know, I, I thought you were, you were a great guy and you would be accepting of this. And I said, well, I actually am not. Maybe she and should I have told you that out. initially. If she had told me that initially, Things would have been different. You never know. I, man, I doubt I would have hung around though. So yeah, that, that case of Pampers never made it. That case of Pampers never made it. I know what happened at all. The cycle of life, you know. But the te this teaches you that you have to be mindful of all the possibilities in this world and you mm -hmm. have to be careful as well with the choices that you make you have to make them with your eyes wide, wide open. open you know thank god for your mom mm -hmm. i On tell that you note, we're gonna take a break <laughs> and be back seaboard marine a leader in ocean transportation is now offering services to belize offering the fastest and most reliable transit to belize Seaboard Marine is the number one choice for shipping. We offer shipping of less than container loads, such as boxes, barrels, and chilled cargo. Full dry and refrigerated containers, project cargo, heavy and special equipment, vehicles, and more. We have sailings from Canada, Houston, New Orleans, Miami, the Caribbean, Central and South America. Seaboard Marine offers the most competitive rates with a fast and dependable shipping schedule excellent customer service, and a convenient location with plenty of parking. Visit our office, website, or call us for more information. From the company who brought you Buendia freeze-dried coffee, Grace 100% pure Colombian coffee is made in Colombia. Consider among the finest coffee regions around the world. Naturally freeze-dried, Gries 100% pure Colombian coffee is exposed to less heat than other coffee brands to preserve the flavor and aroma to make the perfectly convenient cup of coffee you deserve. 
Have a buenos dias with Grace. Recipes go to gracerecipes.com. It's time for Grace. Grace, bringing good taste to life. Busta. They see you and how you're living. Busta. Always a star. Yes, you live in color to the limit. Busta. Large and in charge. Busta. Yes, that's why you rock with Busta. Busta. Refreshing range of colorful flavors. Always a star, never the audience. You run things, things never run you. Busta. Yes, you are the life of it. Not just a part of it. Your life is never black and white. Live in full color. Busta. With the high cost of fuel these days, every fill-up can be a curiously scary experience. Rising gas prices have transformed to the point where it feels like it can cost you the shirt off your back. That's why we created Lucas Fuel Saving Motor Oils. Their special additives increase compression and minimize friction, improving fuel mileage. With Lucas, you'll keep from losing your shirt, or even worse. Whichever suits you better, Grace Coconut Milk is your best choice for taste. Good as homemade, only more convenient. Grace, bringing good taste to life. Let's get ready to rumble! Get serious, get bop. Welcome back to Morning Matters. David, what an interesting thing. Tell us a little bit about what you do here for yourself. Uh, <clears throat> right now I do consulting and training. Okay. Most of the uh, tour guide training in this region I do. I uh, just started a consulting business about uh, two years ago. And basically what I do is put together like uh, standard op operating procedures, performance standards, you know, uh, build structure in within the business, especially businesses that are pertaining to tourism. Okay, for people out there that might want to utilize your service, how can they find you? Uh, they could find me at um, dvernonbelize. Dot com. It's your uh, website. Uh, no, I don't. Okay, how uh, do they find you? Uh, dvernonbelize at gmail. Dot com. Okay. Do you have a phone number? Uh, Six hundred sixty forty four. All right. Uh, before you go, I have to ask you one more morning mm -hmm. matter. Yes. Oh, uh -huh. I have one thing to ask. And I know that this, you know, um, we spoke earlier about the concept of sweat rice. Is there a way to undo it? Not that I know of. Not that I know of. So that's it. So the man you catch have to be the man you're sure that you want. Well, like I mentioned, not necessarily the man that you want. Because uh, I've been told of in instances where... They are bringing another man past that man that's on this sweat on, under this uh, sweat, sweat rice spell, uh, sitting on the step, and they would uh, bring another man right past the man under this sweat rice spell, and literally, um, so it's not necessarily the man. It could be the man that's bringing in all the money, but not necessarily. Not the man they, you want. Mm -hmm. The man you want to turn into a slave is the one that you put under on that this, spell. Jeez, and I believe it worked though. Again, but we're not willing to try. Again, the I don't want to find out. I don't want, want to, to find, find out. out. No, good morning. I have this friend that is pregnant. <laughs> oh, I read that one already. Let's read another matter. Mm. One more matter before you go, Mr. Yes. Good morning. I am in love with someone. 
I know for four years and now I'm currently living with my boyfriend for one year. The guy that I am in love with says that he loves me too and he treats me very well. But I want us to be more. How can I go on and do that? To be more of what? She wants to be more than friends with the man that she's known for four years, but she has a boyfriend for one year. So she wants to know how she can achieve that. By leaving the boyfriend. Yeah. That is elementary. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you I think it's so. worth it, then do it. She wants to be with the one that's... For, that she's been with for four years. Or she the wants one to be the one. She wants to be with the one that she's known for four years. Okay. Not she's been with, but she knows him for four years, and she's obviously having something on the side with him. But she wants to turn it to, into something major. The only way you can do does it is the, to be honest. Yeah. Does the one she's been seeing for four years does he want this as well? Does he want to pursue something more, or he's comfortable with her on the side? That's a very good question. That's she the might, first she thing might she would need to find out. That's right, because maybe the reason he's so nice to her is because he no mind having a part-time girl. Mm -hmm. When you change the rules, you ch everything changes. Yeah. Yeah, because good point. Son suddenly now, when it's just one person he has to deal with. Maybe he don't want all the responsibility. He want, yeah. Maybe he doesn't want to be, uh, he's not ready to be tied down. Don't left the bone for the shadow. <laughs> right now you have the bone the one for one year or one year that you that way that treat you good either say mm -hmm. stick with him because sometimes and i always say this when a man like if you find a man and he's cheating with you and he has his wife don't think if the wife leave he's gonna marry you you know because he don't want a wife mm -hmm. he had a wife if he wanted a wife he would have kept just his wife yeah he want multiple women i'll tell you what we have to have to go because but we have to let Mr. Vernon go because Mr. Vernon has to go. But we're going to take a quick break and come back yeah. with Mr. Drew. Uh, my Mr. Kids Vernon, waiting for you have me. your kids waiting on you? Yes, uh, it's a key trip that we're supposed to be going on. What time <laughs> are you going on the trip? At uh, 10, 10 o'clock. Well, you have a little time to get there. So yeah. what we're going to do, we're going to let you go so you can get there. Thank you so much for stopping in with us this yes. morning. Thank you You're for sharing welcome. some of those stories with us. Yeah. And all the best. Thank you too. Seaboard Marine, a leader in ocean transportation, is now offering services to Belize. Offering the fastest and most reliable transit to Belize, Seaboard Marine is the number one choice for shipping. We offer shipping of less than container loads, such as boxes, barrels, and chilled cargo. Full dry and refrigerated containers, project cargo, heavy and special equipment, vehicles, and more. We have sailings from Canada, Houston, New Orleans, Miami, the Caribbean, Central and South America. Seaboard Marine offers the most competitive rates with a fast and dependable shipping schedule, excellent customer service, and a convenient location with plenty of parking. Visit our office, website, or call us for more information. Welcome back to Morning Matters. Drew, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Rhonda. I'm doing well. David was an interesting fellow. It was good to sit down and mm -hmm. talk with him. I know more about Placencia and Obia than I ever knew. Boy, it's only going to get better. We're going further south. Yeah, I didn't realize <laughs> racism was so prevalent here at one time. Yes, and fortunate for our generation, we never, ex well, I'd have to say my generation, me, I have not experienced racism on any level living in Belize. I experienced racism when I went to America. That was my first. Um, Somebody discriminated against you? But I came from a strong place. I you put them in their place? I then? came from a place, I was raised with a man that was black that didn't know he was black. So I know how to deal he with them. He was Indian, he wasn't black. You ever seen a white Indian? <laughs> <laughs> All right, started as that. <laughs> All right, you have any matters today? No. 
Yeah, sure. You know, I woke up in a good mood today. Hmm. Finally got some good sleep. You know, this Mirasol place is awesome. Though. This what? This Mirasol oh, apartment yes. is awesome, awesome. Yes. Veronique, thank you so much for allowing us to utilize We're this gonna space. We're going to have to get it for a week next time. It is, it is perfect. It's right on the beach. It's clean, it's comfortable, it's spacious. Nice pool, as you can see. Awesome pool. It's private. Oh. It has Wi-Fi. It's just... Three bedroom. Heavenly. You know, maybe I'll just move here Very permanently. Nice. I love it. This man was my boyfriend for like a year, and we broke up. He got married for the past three years. He broke up. Now he comes back to me, but he wants to make life with me. What must I do? Wow. I, I say let him go. You don't need to take him back. He, he got married in the meantime. <laughs> After you were with him for a year, he never asked you to marry him. And he got married to somebody else, and now he come back and wanting you to marry him. Yeah, I'd say t sorry, Charlie. I don't even know why you're having conversations with him still. You know, a lot of people say he wants this and she wants this as if you have no power. Yeah. What about what you want? What about... Well, I think that's why they ask, because they don't want to, but they feel obligated. Why? Well, I, my point it, exactly. The shortest word to say is no. And it shouldn't be so yeah. difficult when it's not in your best interest. You know, I think we would all better ourselves by learning to use that word. Just no. No, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, it's no. okay to say no. Because if he was interested in you the way he should have been or the way he says he is now, he would, you would have been wife. Don't settle for less. I live with my boyfriend for five years. We have a child who is four years old. Both of us wants to get married, but he keeps on saying, when I am ready to be a wife is when he's going to ask me to marry him. And she says she's ready to be a wife. You were ready to be a wife the day you gave birth to this child or the day you started living with him and decided you're going to get pregnant for him. Well, you know, so much has passed. Maybe we need to go against the conventional here. Maybe you need to ask him. That will show him. That will call him yeah. out. Say, look, maybe you, you obviously trying to put the burden on me, but I am ready to be a wife. And... Obviously, he's not ready to be a husband. You need to march him down to one of the jewelry stores and say, look, <laughs> boy, it's time you buy that ring because... No, all of those other formalities is gone, you know. Where's the romance in that? Marching him down there to buy the ring. Where's the romance in living with him for five years and a well, four-year-old? That's, that's after the fact. She's already done that. Good. And so what? She must wait for another five years to be married. Romance? She could be... No, he either. has enough time to be romantic. He has not taken the option. You just say, when will you be ready? And if the time frame doesn't fit her, move on. I say march him down to the jewelry store. Give him the option to have a little romance in the thing. I give him two weeks then. Two weeks? <laughs> to get himself to the jewelry store. <laughs> on the baby's next birthday. No, no, no. Maybe till Christmas then. If it doesn't happen between now and Christmas. Well, yeah. well then, then you hope for Valentine's Day. No. No, 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 no. And you then, oh, on the birthday. No, 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 no. And then, oh, Thanksgiving. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Independence no, Day. No, no, no. You have to set <laughs> boundaries. If it doesn't happen between now and Christmas, then you ask him on Valentine. If he say no, you know your packet chops and gone. You're not wasting any more time. Yes. You can't keep waiting forever. And maybe you don't set him a deadline, but you set yourself a deadline and say, if it doesn't happen by this, you need to move on. Let him know that there is a deadline in place. He needs to know. Maybe then yeah, you don't need to put it on him, but say, if we're not married by the first of the year, I'm gone. Or at least engaged. Because... Don't. No, you got to be married. I have a baby father, and we broke up now. But sometimes he still come and knock on my door. I don't know what to do. I don't want anything with him. When then he knocks, say don't no. answer. Say, what do you want? Go away. What are you answering for? Of course, then he'll play the kid and he'll say, well, I'm here to see my son. You should have called first. But he needs to have a schedule for that, not whenever he feels like it. Exactly. Look who show up. Jump oh, over the fence. There we go. <laughs> All right. I think that if there is no, um, 
If he has no reason to come to your door and knock, you need to stop it. When the next time he come and knock on your door, he said, look, stop coming yeah. here to knock. He's if, obviously not bringing money for the baby. No, no, no. He can't come knock on your door at random. This is not, um, what they call it, Haven House. All right? You don't do that. You have to set your boundaries. You say you don't like it, but your actions show that you don't mind it. And if you don't mind it, he will do it. You need to treat him like any other stranger knocking at the door. Yes. Don't even open the door. Just kind of like pull the window and says, what do you want, John? Okay, that's not happening. Goodbye. And lock back the window. You do that to him one time, he's not coming back. Probably right. But Isela stop in. So guess where we are, though? We have to get a segment with Isela. Perfect. Good morning. Me have on the same color blouse to girl. Good morning. I have this boy. We all... Is that, is that wash and wear or just wear? Drew, I have many of these. <laughs> They're my uniform tops. And you know this too. Don't you have some of your own? I do. You should wear them more often. I feel like I waste... Well, I do, but I can't wear mine when you wear yours. And you tricked me last time. You called me on the phone and asked me what I was wearing. So you could wear the same thing. Don't do you that need again. to get better at telling lies. Good morning. I have this boy. We all ready have sex and he doesn't want me now. What should I do? Nothing you can do. Sex. Go on. Chalk it up to experience. Learn from it. Don't do it again. Sex is... Don't jump into bed with somebody until... There's a connection there. You know they're going to be around. Sex is not a, um, That's not gonna not a keep contract, them. you know. That's not going to keep them. Sex is just sex. And that people find it hard when I say that. But sex is just sex. Sex is just something that you do depending on where you when are. When you feel like it. No, you might do it for, you might need to do it depending on where you are in your life. Or you might feel the attraction for now. But sex is not the basis on which you have a relationship. Sex is not what holds a relationship together or destroys a relationship. And you don't give sex to a man or a woman with the hope that you can form a relationship because they like the sex. Because there's always somebody out there that will give better sex or a different sex or a stranger sex and they might just want a little change in sex. That's true. So, don't base it on sex, because when you do that, you deter you destroy what could be great. What will happen when you become 50 now and you don't want that same old sex anymore? Our sex is not important. I want to talk, and we can't talk because we never well, talk. We've never talked. All we did was have sex. That's true. And now all we can do is talk. That's true. What do you if think you, was <laughs> If you talk and laugh along the way, then when the sex fades, or if it fades, you still have the talks and the laughs. Right? So when you have sex, don't feel like it is a trade-off. A lot of girls feel like that. Oh, I had sex with him and now he leave me. <laughs> you know, oh, I had sex with... No, no, Like no, he no. broke the contract. When you had sex with him, it was mutual. He didn't rape you. You give him sex. That's right. Or maybe he gave it to her. Or he S gave it to she. Sex do a fair exchange, right? It's just, it should be something that you do, not as a trade, but because you want. Right. Right. You're not trading it for a relationship. That's right. You're sounding a bit nasally. Are you real? I'm just perfect, Drew. Since when? I... Since when am I sick? Since when have you been perfect? <laughs> it's okay. You need to learn the meaning of perfect. This one says, I really need a good woman. Can you Don't find one for me? Well, uh, this is not a dating site. Good morning. I have this boy. Oh, she just the same one she sent. Okay. She sent it twice? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. She expect two answers? This one says, I have a girlfriend, but I have another girl that's interested in me. How should I choose them? Or which one should I choose? Well, if the girlfriend really caught your interest you wouldn't worry about the second one the second one wouldn't have stepped in does it say the other girl's interested in him or he's interested in another girl he's probably interested in all of them well then you tell all of them that you're interested but you're not committed why is it that it's so hard for people to just say what they want a lot and i find this with a lot of men I find that they will come and tell you because a story because if they say what they want they think they won't get what they, they want they just might <laughs> yeah, but they, they just might. They just might, but odds are they won't get what they want. Chances are they <laughs> will. 
Because if you come to me and you say, you know, Ronda, I don't want a relationship with you, but this is what I would want from you. I might be in the same place. Or I might be in, in a place where I might want a relationship, but I might mind having a good time. So if you come to me and say, I just want a good time, I might say, you know what, you come at a perfect time when I just want a good time too. But if you come to me and tell me you want a relationship, I take your word for it. So now you're tricked too. You know you don't want a relationship. So you have to pretend for the next six months or six weeks or whatever it is that you want a relationship with me to get what you want. When you could have get what you want six weeks ago and just tell me and gone about your business long time. Why you have to enslave yourself for an additional six months you for nothing? You don't have to get mad at me, Rhonda. I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying, why do people do that? Just ask for what you want. Somebody out there is going to be willing to give it to you. On that note, we're going to take a break and be back. Seaboard Marine, a leader in ocean transportation, is now offering services to Belize. Offering the fastest and most reliable transit to Belize, Seaboard Marine is the number one choice for shipping. We offer shipping of less than container loads, such as boxes, barrels, and chilled cargo. Full dry and refrigerated containers, project cargo, heavy and special equipment, vehicles, and more. We have sailings from Canada, Houston, New Orleans, Miami, the Caribbean, Central and South America. Seaboard Marine offers the most competitive rates with a fast and dependable shipping schedule, excellent customer service, and a convenient location with plenty of parking. Visit our office, website, or call us for more information. From the company who brought you Buendia freeze-dried coffee, Gris 100% pure Colombian coffee is made in Colombia, considered among the finest coffee regions around the world. Naturally freeze-dried, Gris 100% pure Colombian coffee is exposed to less heat than other coffee brands to preserve the flavor and aroma to make the perfectly convenient cup of coffee you deserve. Have a buenos dias with Gris. Recipes go to gracerecipes.com. It's time for Grace. Grace, bringing good taste to life. Busta. They see you and how you're living. Busta. Always a star. Yes, you live in color to the limit. Busta. Large and in charge. <laughs> yes, that's why you rock with Busta. Busta. Refreshing range of colorful flavors. Always a star, never the audience. You run things, things never run you. Busta. Yes. You are the life of it, not just a part of it. Your life is never black and white. Live in full color. Buster. With the high cost of fuel these days, every fill-up can be a curiously scary experience. Rising gas prices have transformed to the point where it feels like it can cost you the shirt off your back. That's why we created Lucas Fuel Saving Motor Oils. Their special additives increase compression and minimize friction, improving fuel mileage. With Lucas, you'll keep from losing your shirt, or even worse. Whichever suits you better, Grace Coconut Milk is your best choice for taste. Good as homemade, only more convenient. Grace, bringing good taste to life. Let's get ready to rumble! Get off.
Welcome back to Morning Matters right here at Marisol in Placencia. Isela has shown up. What do you know? Isela, how are you going, girl? I'm feeling much better. How are you, Rhonda? I'm good. I am headacheless. Headacheless? How I was am... the party last night? I didn't go to the party. I, I, I know I'm getting old. No, because when I, I start be partying now. at, like if I stop, but I finish work at 5 o'clock and I have a few drinks, then I just stay out till like 11 o'clock. I remember days when I used to finish work at 5 o'clock. Maybe I'll hang out and go to happy hour till 6 or whatever. I go home, I sleep, I wake up back at midnight and I come out again. <laughs> Those days are gone. Gone. <laughs> None at all. Any matters this morning? There always matters, Rhonda. What are you talking about? This is morning matters. You have any of your own you want to tell me? Um... No. Okay. I was married to this man. We've been divorced for many years, but when I see him out, it still affects me. We both have moved on. I don't want him. Why does this still affect me? You get the first go. Me? Yes. I was going to say, Rhonda, I think you should do that one. I think that what happened is a matter of control. I think that you remembered how things were and you enjoyed having that control. This man was my man. This man is not your man. You need to start thinking about when you see this man, think of the reason why you left this man and not the reason why you were with this man. I think if you were to change your mindset, you wouldn't feel anything, especially if you are not interested in this man anymore. But when you look at him sometimes, I don't know if you share children with him or whatever the case is, but you might look at him and say, I remember the good times that Tom Jones and I used to have, you know, and look at him out there. Look at the, how, what a waste we had or how it whatever it is that go through your mind but the first thing that you think of were the good times why you feel that way the next time you see tom jones out with mary jane or the skunk on the end of the street or the queen of england or whoever you see him out with look at him and say better them than me yeah think about how, why you are not with him anymore and why you pushed on past him then you would not feel any remorse you will not feel any longing or any anything nothing will affect you because you see it for what it is and not what it was yes that sounds that's that sounds, that sounds yeah i always you are such a smart person Rhonda. It, what a pity I was you are able to to take the heart out of the situation drew would tell you it's because i don't have a heart but he doesn't know <laughs> i've always maintained you should think with your head because when you allow the heart to take over it just fogs up the brain, but it's not, a, it's not so clean cut and simple like you put it, Rhonda. It Sometimes the heart is like, it takes over and where I would say it's not a good thing, it is a real thing. The heart is designed to pump blood. We have to protect the heart. The heart doesn't have any brain, right. but the heart thinks that it can think. So we have to protect the heart. You understand? The heart. The heart. Put it in quotes. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yes. The heart doesn't have a brain, but the heart feels that it can think. It's like one of those little, you ever go to somebody's house and they have one of those little house dog? Mm -hmm. And they bark so loud like they can bite you, but they're mm -hmm. really just a whole oh, lot I of know, nice. I know that perfectly. They're not guard dogs. Mm -hmm. That's the heart. The heart think it's a guard dog, but maybe it's a house dog. Maybe it's because, maybe it's because the heart rate speeds up you know the, the rush of adrenaline and all that happens mm, just when you see a person yes that you're in love with and everything is good and every and even when you're not in love anymore or the love has faded that still happens it's because you entertain it when you find so it's it not physical no it is all in your head in my opinion when you you can you know when it's happening when it's happening you have to change your thought Rhonda, I love you, but no buts. I always think that you have the right answer. You are able, like I said, you are able to separate the two. It's not always that easy for everyone, Rhonda. But I, and I know it's not easy, not even for me, you know. I too was in love, you know. I know. And I think that I could possibly be in love again. And I, but even in my present life now, I see things that affects my heart. But because I am aware... Because you're smart. I don't know that I am smart. You have matured. You have grown. You have learned. Experience. And, and I have learned that I need to quickly bring my thought back into focus. Right. Not, my, not my emotions. We can't allow when our When I emotions. get big, I want to be like Rhonda. <laughs> when I grow up, Rhonda, you're my girl. <laughs> Thanks, Isela. <laughs>
this one says my boyfriend is lazy and unmotivated but i feel obligated to keeping him because of the child we share he's a good father i'll make you go first this time Isella. all right well 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 you have a child and the child is the most important thing right so maybe you feel like it's the best thing, the wisest thing to, to keep him around because of the child. And I hear you, but what the question you need to ask yourself is what is the child is the most important yes. thing and this man is a good father. Those are two important things. Yes. This man will not be any less of a father if he is being a father in his own home. But you also have, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl you have, let's say you have a son. Is this the example of or the image of a man that you want to give your son? You know why there are so many clinging boyfriends? You know why I had to find so many or why you know why a lot of Caribbean women ran into so many needy men and needy boyfriends and, and, and unmotivated boyfriends? It's because our parents chose them as our fathers. So now we so these boys grew up in a home where the mother provided everything. They took care of all the sons. And the sons were priority. If you grew up in a Caribbean home, you know the sons are priority. The sons come first. And then they take care of the father. And the father lazy and he stay home and smoke cigarette all day and drink rum on Friday. And he come home when he want and he work when he want. So what do you think the boys that are growing up picture a father to be or a husband to be just like my father because i want a man in the house like my father and i want a woman in the house like my mother so now that is the perfect life for these young people growing up the person that sends this text need to ask themselves if this is how they want their son to grow up if this is the example of a wife or a mother that that child must then go out and seek no or no, I should say, if this is the example of a husband that you want your child to be like when he gets his home, yeah. I think you need to sit down with this man and say, look, the pity party done. Because the wife isn't happy. The husband isn't happy because he doesn't feel like a full man in that house and she doesn't feel like a full woman in that house. And the son or the daughter that's growing up there is also becoming contaminated because while he might play with the daughter or with the son he's not playing with the wife and the child as much as you might not see that the, you might think that the child not notice that there is no the relationship that is there is unusual you know but they notice i mean i grew up in a home where and and my family might not find this entertaining but this is my experience in my home and i can speak about it i grew up in a home where i vowed to never date a man like my father my father was an awesome father i wouldn't choose another father but where he was a husband he was a horrible husband oh husband part so i was aware from then that i was able to separate both of them so i always and i think this is what made me give my child the opportunity to see her father as an awesome father or however he wants to display himself to her that is between him and her but i will not let myself go through a relationship because he's a good father to his child and suffer as an a terrible husband Rhonda, is there any other matter can we move on <laughs> please Why? please okay. i don't like that matter there. you don't like that matter there all right fine i have an affair with a man that works for me he has a woman and I am single. Do you think he'll ever leave that woman for me? Chances are no. It's possible. But why does he stay? Why hasn't he left her yet? You the boss. She the boss. But she don't boss. If she was boss, she would have handled this situation differently. Long time. She's not a boss. A boss would say, I'm not messing with the worker. If you want to date me, two things you have to do. Lose this job and become single. That is a boss. Right. You're not a boss. And he will not leave his woman because he needs to provide for them. He's taking your money and your time and your sweets to take right. home. You are being milked. 
ton sign. You da sugar mama. And if you like being milked, then you have found yourself a perfect milker. Then you allow it. You know, and a lot of women are bosses out there, but they're not boss. Right. You need to, you need to recognize that. The girlfriend is the boss. She's the boss. He's the boss. Everybody's the boss except and you. And I wonder if the girlfriend knows what's going on. Oh, because no. many times they do. Yes. You think she would? Uh, they allow it. The money they come home to me, it happens. I know it happens. I don't disbelieve you. It happens. I've seen it happen right around here. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, because it, they, 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 become, they become complacent. They're like, well then, fine, it will happen anyway. Might as well it happen with a rich one that I can get. It happens. You know, to each his own. And if it is happening and you like the joke, then knock yourself A out. lot of times women realize that they're not going to win. Or so they think. They're not going to win. It's going to happen if it's with this woman. If it's not her, it's going to be someone else. And so they just accept it. Because you have one life to live. Are you going to live this life always being miserable and worried and chasing your man and the try sewer party there or, you know, might as well you just leave it alone because you have the children to take care of. You have your own sanity to take care of. Forget about it. I'm telling you, this is what I know happens. You I, know what? And I agree. I hear you. I have a beauty salon. <laughs> get all the I get it. Sometimes maybe it's even about me and I'm not aware. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I say that everything has a price. Everything in this world has a price. And if that is the price that you want to put on your life, then let it be. Right. But be aware that you have made the choice that that is your price. Right? Don't mm -hmm. come acting like it's not your price. If it's your price, it's your price. But me, you, I would be the woman that would be single as opposed to have a man sleep up next to me that I know sleep up next to another girl. I'm not having it. But some people don't, they can't do that or they feel that they can't do that because they have five children for this man already. Sometimes, like that woman feels like she'll never find another man. <laughs> Good point. But you don't need one if this is what you got. Yeah, but sometimes women want that man beside them. Sometimes. So you, and I always say, if you want to have one man like purse, you don't need her. If they just want fashion man, we're loving their same. If you want a showpiece man, those are a dime a dozen, you could pick them up. If you want your baby's, your children's father. If you want your children's father, that is your choice as well. Right. But it happens. You can keep your children's father. I am not here to tell you to leave your children's father. I'm saying then that if you have your children's father and it is not working out, then you have to find a way to cope with it and not complain about it. Right. And that's why they accept it and they forget about it and eventually... They're everybody happy. Everybody happy. They're sitting at the bar with their husband and the sugar mama. Well, for speaking of which, listen to this matter. It's like the Nihayo. It says, my common-law husband keep having affairs with sugar mamas. It's happened so often that I now sit with them and have drinks. First, I wanted to kill her, but now I have come to a place of acceptance. What is wrong with me? What is wrong with you? Low self-esteem is wrong with you. You have no self-esteem. You have no, no hope, no, no power. You believe, you believe that you can't have more. You know, you get what you want. You get what you settle for. You get what you chase. That there will be a time. If you make up your mind and you extract yourself from the situation, there will be a time where, yes, you will be alone and yes, you will be lonely. But in that time, I think you will earn respect. The man that is having these women will never choose you willfully with the mindset you have now. You will never win him. Exactly. The reason you will never win him is because you don't believe enough in yourself. yourself. You yeah. don't give him anything to challenge him. You are like a constant. I know the bus stop is there. That bus stop will not move. I will sit on it when it's raining. That's the only time I will sit at that bus stop. That is how he sees you. I like that. You know, it's, it's the truth. You have to be now, you have to be a thinking individual that say, you see me, if you want me, you have to do this. If you don't, he needs to suffer like most people, the sense of loss. Oh, and how about when he comes back crying? When he comes back oh, crying, you send I him miss, back again. I miss my kids. He can see his kids. 
never keep a man or a woman away from their children because these children need these people. Like I said, they might be good husbands. No, or but wives. he misses his kids because he's been away for three weeks having fun. Yes. And you are mad. You're at home. Oh, and then you look for the piece of stick for whop out the lady and you lay away. Yes. And in that time where there is all that anger, he has stayed away. So now he comes back. He misses his kids. He's crying. Mm hmm and so you listen to him and oh he misses his kids and you're so weak you must not be weak you're weak for the wrong thing you're weak for the wrong reason you need this is a time when you need to be strong stop chasing the woman with the stick but i miss you babe and you know that is a good thing you should have missed me 10 years ago when you were sleeping with those other women you need to have you need to be strong, strong. for yourself you right. can't let somebody's words determine what you do. You have to know your work. When the man comes and say, oh, I love you and I miss you and oh my goodness. And we've all been there. You say, well, th while that is good, you see your children, you can go and see them whenever you want. You can even come here and see them. But when you come to see them, I'm going out. Because I have a life and I... No, but you can't go. You are not supposed to go out. You are the baby's mother. You're supposed to stay home and take care of them. From that the way you think. That's the way I no, think. That, no, 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 that's the okay. way I, mean, I said to him. That's the way you think. Uh -huh. But today the game changed. The mm -hmm. game changed when you started to do those things. Right. I know I will do what I need to do for my betterment. It's like a woman said the other day. When you are sinking, or Anne, I think Anne said it, and Fuller, Anne said when you are sinking, if you have five children in the boat, the first thing you do is drop on your life vest. Not that you want them to drown, but without you being strong, you can't save them. That was a good show. I enjoyed listening to her. And it's amazing, true? It, it was a good, good show. Thank you, Anne, for coming on. But yeah, and that is what we have to do. So we can't worry about anything until we are strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always tell you that. Strengthen yourself. Even in the airplane, they said, put on, put your, on mask your mask first. first. Yeah. And you know what? Instinct will, will have you taking care of that child first. Yes. But, but you have to know that you have to take care of yourself first. All right. Self-preservation is important. This is really getting good. I think it's life. This is getting good, Rhonda. We definitely have to take care of I ourselves. I wonder if I'm supposed to like, be afraid for you or something. With a friend, cell. No, but we you are like him. Um, what a lady, my name, what you call him? Oh, the one we got in the jail or something. The psychic. What a lady, my name? Yes, man. Um, Miss Cleo. Cleo. Miss Cleo. <laughs> Miss Cleo. Miss Cleo. Cleo. You know, um, how you get so smart? You know, I don't know that I'm so smart, Cell. Honestly, I see you as that, Rhonda. I mean, I have my answers, I have my opinions, but when you decide, I like, yeah, you're right. And you know, I don't think that I'm smarter than anybody. I don't think that I'm more special because anybody that knows me know that I've had a lot of not so perfect relationships. You like country music? I love country music. That, that. <laughs> no, I listen to these songs and I'm thinking, my. Gosh, what did she go through? What did Reba go through <laughs> <coughs> that she can come up with this good stuff? Think about, I mean, you have to have been there. And I think that is what a lot of people don't realize, that it's a matter of perspective based on where we came. We didn't go through all of them, but I grew up in a Caribbean home. I grew up with a man that did what he wanted, a mother that was passive and took. I grew up where I saw... On Christmas Day, 10 men coming to my house, my mother railing up. I didn't see any of that. No? Nope. I saw, I have a father that we've respected. He's always provided. I have a mother that sits beside him in the business. We had um, helped to raise us and do everything for us. But mommy and daddy are always there as the couple that we revere. And, and we've, we have, we've had everything we've we've been so lucky we the whole family is very well knit and um christmas is only for the family we don't get visitors it's it doesn't happen but there are so many of us that it's a big party every all the time so <clears throat> saying that it's different Rhonda. and you know that should and that should be a prime example for people and still we mess up you know and that should be a prime example of how we teach our kids Children, I would imagine, in a home that came and from still yours. we mess up. No, your ideal should have been to find a man like your husband, like your father, and a and a yeah. wa and a wife, or depending on the boys, like your mother. Yes. But in my case, I was bound that I would do just the opposite. Right. <laughs> yeah. You and know, 
My mother used to say, well, run that. If you don't learn to cook and do this, you're not going to find a husband. I said, mom, when I get old, I'll be able to pay somebody to do these things so that I don't have to keep no man to cook for them. Cook! Sure. Mom, I'm up to now, I still can't cook. I Maybe can't some of my friends would say, that's why you're not married yet. <laughs> I can't. I don't care for it. It's not my job. No. I don't care for it. Well, so, let's hope that we've helped somebody today. Well, let's Thank hope. you for dropping, girl. <laughs> girl, Rhonda. I got a headache. No, I'm fine. No, I said I got a headache. You have a headache. No, just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you with that. I know you can. <laughs> Guys, until next time, I encourage you to take care of yourselves and each other. But before I go, I have to remind you that when you come to Placencia, please stop in at Marisol. They are the most amazing uh, apartment buildings on the water. I mean... It's been awesome here. I'm definitely, like definitely it. been awesome. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. They have a pool. Veronique, thank you again for allowing us to oh. have this experience. And we encourage people to come on over to Placencia. It's like the coolest hot spot in town. The coolest hot spot in town. That's an Placencia. oxymoron. It is, isn't it? Go to the Tipsy Tuna. Yes. For your cold drinks and come to Z Touch for your deep tissue massage. That's right. <laughs> and if you're looking for a place to stay, it must be Mirasol. Or Mirasol. 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 Mirasol at a gal <laughs> Yeah, we know that one. <laughs> Mira Sol is definitely the place to come. Guys, until next time, we encourage you to take care of yourselves and each other. This is Ronda Crane along with... Isela. <laughs> Say goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>